Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. The 2-5-1 is the most common chord progression in jazz improvisation, and so many people want to know how to actually solo over those chord changes. Good news, I've done a whole bunch of videos on the 2-5-1, and I'll link those in the description down below. This video, however, is going to cover a slightly different version of the 2-5-1 that's called the Backdoor 2-5-1. Just before I get into it and actually teach you what a Backdoor 2-5-1 is and how to solo over it, I have a gift for you. It's a PDF explaining what the Backdoor 251 is. It has some sample lines on there, how to construct it, and it's a great resource for you as you practice playing this really cool set of chord changes. All you have to do is click the link at the top of the description down below, or the link in the pinned comment, or just go to davepollock.com slash backdoor251. Also, if you haven't checked it out yet, I have a masterclass that's all about voice leading and how to create melodic solos. So many people say, you know, I know some scales, I know some chords, but when I solo, I can't really connect the chords together in a melodic and lyrical way, and this masterclass is exactly what you need. It's completely free, it comes with a bunch of PDFs along with that lesson video, and you can get that completely free by clicking the link down in the description as well, or going to davepollock.com slash free masterclass. All right, so what does a Backdoor 251 sound like? It actually appears in a whole bunch of different songs and a bunch of jazz standards that you probably know, but you might not have known there was Backdoor 251s in them. Check these out. Pretty cool, huh? You may have known that that was a Backdoor 251, or you just knew it sounded cool and didn't know exactly what it was. Either way, if you've ever tried to improvise over those chord changes, you might have seen, you know, there's a 2-5, but it doesn't really resolve, right? How do I get through that? This video is for you. And now I'm gonna dive into that PDF worksheet, and I want you to have it up for yourself as well as I go through it. And I'm gonna show you how to construct and play through Backdoor 251. Here we go. All right, so now you see them inside the PDF called Backdoor 251. There is no key for this. I'm not giving one for a specific instrument like saxophone or trumpet or whatever. It's just in the key of C, whatever. So you can put it in the key of your C, concert C, doesn't matter. You should really approach it in all 12 keys as well, but I'm just doing it in a C for ease of reading for this video and for this PDF. So first off, let's just review what a regular 251 is. Regular 251 is the two chord, the five chord, the one chord of a key. In this case, the key, the one is C major. So the two chord is D, the five chord is G. And because we use the notes of the key of C major, the two chord, when you construct a seventh chord, it becomes D minor seven. The five chord is G dominant seven. And those are the chords of a major 251 in C major. If you don't know what that is, I highly recommend checking out some of my other videos and lessons about 251s, then coming back to this so you can dive into the substitution of a backdoor 251. So now if you look below that, you see the backdoor 251. So what is it? Well, you can look at it two different ways. You can look at it as, look, we have a 2-5 here, F minor to B flat, but it doesn't resolve to the one that it would normally go to. Or you can just say, okay, we're still in the key of C, so it should be D minor seven to G seven, but wait, those are different. Basically what's happening here is instead of the two chord being a whole step above the root, we're coming in from the back way, the back door. And this way, the five chord is a whole step below the root. So the five chord in this case, instead of being G seven is B flat seven. And then it's a whole step up to the res resolution chord of C major seven. Another way to think of this is you have a two five in the key of the flat third of the key you're going to. If that sounds a little confusing, just break it down. What key are we in? C major. What's the flat third of C major? That would be E flat. So what's a two five in E flat? Oh, it would be F minor seven to B flat seven. The only difference is we don't resolve to that E flat. We go F minor seven, 
up to B flat seven, that's a two five in E flat. But then instead of resolving to E flat, we resolve up a whole step from here and resolve to C major. Another way to think about it is you take your one chord, once again, C major, you could play the minor four, F minor seven, then the flat seven, but dominant chord, so B flat seven. So if you wanna think four, flat seven, one, that works. A two five in the key of the flat third, that works. Or you could work backwards. All right, the five chord is a whole step below the root and then put the two before it. Whatever you want to do, understand that this is the process here. In the key of C, it's F minor seven, B flat seven to C. And then what a good idea is for you if you're trying to get these chords under your fingers or try to know them in your mind is go through all 12 keys. Maybe write out all 12 resolution chords, write 12 major chords, and then write the backdoor two fives that lead to each of them. So you can start identifying all three chords as one unit of a backdoor two five one. All right, so how do you actually improvise through this backdoor two five one? It's so complicated. You have like a two five to the flat third, but then I have to resolve down to the, let's just look at what it is. There's a two five there, right? It's a two five. The only difference is at the very end, at the end of the five chord, instead of it resolving to the normal one, it resolves up a whole step from that five chord. So I think the best way to approach it is just take the two and the five for what they are. Then at the very end, you voice lead into the new chord. And by the way, a backdoor two five one is a set of chord changes, but you can have a whole bunch of non-resolving two fives. You can have a two five that leads anywhere, any million different chords afterwards, but this is a specific set of two five, then up a whole step. It can resolve to any chord and you would still approach it the same way. What do I mean by approach it the same way? Well, here we go. First, let's just break it down. Let's play a long two, five, one in C major. When I say long two, five, one, I just mean a measure of the two chord, a measure of the five chord, then resolve. For all of these, I'm going to resolve on the third of the one chord here because I just love resolving on the third. It's very stable. It sounds good. It always works. So I'm just going to do that. So first, I'm going to play a long two, five, one in the key of C major, like regular. This is a regular major two, five, one. Here's what this sounds like. All right, next step is we're gonna go to that new two and five. So we're gonna go to F minor seven to B flat seven. And what we're gonna do is actually go up to the flat third of the key we're ultimately trying to go to C major. We're gonna go up a flat third from there as well. So we're basically transposing this entire line up a minor third. You'll see why in a second. So here's what it sounds like when I go F minor seven, B flat seven, resolving to E flat major seven. This is a normal two five now in the key of E flat major. Here's what this sounds like. Okay, now for the final step, we're gonna leave that two and that five the same. So we're gonna have the same two chord, the F minor seven, same five chord, the B flat seven, the only difference now is we're gonna change that resolution chord. And just like we saw up here, the resolution chord from F minor seven, B flat seven in a backdoor two, five, one is C major. So if we go back down, here's our resolution chord. Now, if you notice something, look at the resolution note that I had here. It was the third of the regular one. So the third of E flat is G. I also picked that because when you switch the chord, if you land on that same note, it's still now a chord tone. You don't have to switch anything if you're just resolving on one note or you wanna pick one strong note, this is now the five of our new landing note. So we have the backdoor two, five, one, F minor seven, B flat seven, up to C major. Here's what this sounds like. Did you notice that I used the exact same recording as I did above when it resolved to E flat major? It's because the line is exactly the same. The only thing that changes is that resolution chord. I hope this shows you how actually simple it is to play through this. You don't have to have these wild concepts and wild ideas of going here and going there. Just take it for what it is. It's a two five in a specific key that ends up going somewhere else at the very end. I call it a non-resolving two five one because it doesn't really resolve to the normal one, but this specific set of chord changes once again is called something. It's called the backdoor two five one. Now, just like you can take long two five ones and shorten them and make them twice as fast or half the length, you can do the same thing here with the backdoor two, five, one and turn it into a short two, five, one. Once again, my terminology, short two, five, one is just two beats of the two chord, two beats of the five chord, then the resolution chord. I go through the same process here. Step one is just play 
a regular 2-5-1, in this case in C major. Then transpose the entire thing up a minor third, so you get F minor, B flat, E flat. Then you just get rid of that last E flat and go back to C major, so you have F minor, B flat, to C major. So first, here's what the first one sounds like, a regular short 2-5-1 in C major. All right, so now I'm gonna transpose that up a minor third. Now we have a regular 2-5-1 in E flat major. All right, now for the final step, I'm gonna play the exact same recording, the exact same line. The only difference is the resolution chord is gonna change. Now it's gonna be F minor seven, B flat seven, then going up to C major seven. Here's what this sounds like. All right, I know this was a pretty quick lesson about the backdoor 251, but honestly, I don't want to complicate things. Some people out there like to make it more complex. I don't know if it's because they want to seem like they know a lot or they want to confuse you for some reason, but I want to make things as simple as possible. And if you already know how to play through a major 251, and if you've gone over my other lesson videos, you already know how to do that. You already have the skills to play over this. It's just about thinking a little differently as you go through these chord changes. Be sure to download the PDF that goes along with this video. It's really great for you to have as a resource when you're practicing it or when you're watching the lesson as well so you can follow along and see it. You can make notes on it, do whatever you want. And also don't forget to check out my masterclass called The Best Way to Create Melodic Solos if you wanna really learn how to voice lead well through chord changes. Both of these are completely free and links to them will be in the description down below. Like always, if you have any other topics you'd like to see me cover here on my channel, whether it's jazz improvisation, saxophone specifically, or really anything else, please let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.